The, uh, if you look at your bulletin, the uh, big news for the for our charge is the charge conference is November 22nd. So we've got papers to get together. Um, we've got a vision statement that we've already got. It's in a bulletin, so we don't have to do that. But if you have any ideas for the visions and goals we have to put up every year, let me know. Maybe like the uh, like a Harvest Fest committee, that's whoever shows up, does it. But we've got that, and we've got some other papers to do. But um, the other thing is, if you're on a nominate, if you're a, if you've got a role in the church, if you are on a committee or have a job and you want to change, let me know. Or if you want to join one of those jobs, let me know. Um, they're kind of set in stone <laughs> over the years. But uh, anyway, let me know. We can always change. We don't want to make it so that you're obligated to keep those old jobs. You may not even know what jobs you have. But if, you're, if you have any questions about that, let me know. Um, so this week I've got, this month I've got um, the church conference papers. I've got an article for the paper. I've got a, uh, my class I'm taking where I have to write papers. And I've got my decom, which is I have to write stuff. I have to write down and listen to one of my sermons. If that's not a hard thing to do, and write it down. So I've got all that, and I thought, you know, I would do this part for free. But the writing part of it, and I thought, I'm getting paid to be a writer, something I always wanted to do. <laughs> so I put a good spin on that. Um, but anyway, if you have any input for the charge conference, let me know. Um, otherwise, a lot of this is routine. You just have to, to fill in the blanks, and I'll get a lot of that done. And, uh, I'll have to meet with Carolyn because there's some PPR stuff that needs to be done. All right. Any, uh, any other announcements? How about birthdays or anniversaries? My sister's birthday is today, but she's not here. Yeah. You know, I'm not waiting for her birthday to hear her birthday. Um, she can listen to the recording. Maybe I'll, I'll, maybe I'll send her the recording. Okay. I didn't send her this church service this morning. I, I turned 36 on Monday. <laughs> well, you know, one of the things about our family, we have dyslexia, we can never turn it around. I do all the time. It doesn't work for them. As long as they don't catch us, it's okay, because on income tax, they don't you know, like that. All right, so, um, so we're going to sing. So we're going to sing, that's exactly what we're going to
done that we lay aside our worries and cares and focus upon the Lord and His goodness to us. It's real easy with the, if you listen to the news to get tangled up with that or to get busy with the work that we've got to do. We've got jobs to do and uh, certainly I, I know with farming everything kind of clumps up in the fall again and uh, drilling to be done and paint to be put up. Soybeans to be cut, and it all happens at once. And we can get busy, so busy we don't take a vacation and refresh our souls. So let's take a moment and refresh our souls. Let the kindness and goodness of God come into our hearts and the restfulness that He has for us. Let's let Him work within us and walk among us. So let's take a moment and be thankful. Think of three things you're thankful for. I invite you to do. And uh, we'll see what God is going to do today. So let's have a moment of silence. Open up your heart. Rest your soul. And see what God's going to do. And then I'll lead us in prayer. God, we do worship you and we praise your holy name. We ask that you would come and enter our service here, enter our hearts. Help us to bind together in your love and be able to be your church here in Culver and the surrounding community. I pray that you would guide us with your Holy Spirit today. Speak to us through your songs and through the scriptures. And help us to focus upon the most important thing that there is to focus upon, that is, you and your love to us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, the psalm is Psalm 25, verses 1 to 10. 1 to 7. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul, in you I trust, O my God. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one whose hope is in you will ever be put to shame, but they will be put to shame who are treacherous without excuse. Show me your ways, O Lord, teach me your paths, guide me in your truth, and teach me, for you are God, my Savior. And my hope is in you all day long. Remember, O oh Lord, your great mercy and love. For they are from old. Remember not the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways according to your love. Remember me, for you are good. Amen. So, um, let's sing the next song. It's 706 in your hymn book. Oh, by the way, I didn't introduce uh, Vince is here today. And uh, you may have met him once before when he's back and to come and enjoy our service. And we've got Donovan Chappie to come and sing for us. And Carol. And Carol, thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, we're going to, to hear some wonderful music and be able to listen to how God wants to work in our hearts through it. Let's, though, right now participate in the singing, um, 706 in your hymn book, and we've got an ending that Gail will help me with, but I don't put it in say what's there, but I just printed it. Um, we'll sing all three verses, and then we'll go back and repeat the first verse as soon and very soon, and then this is the ending that follows that, and it's just hallelujah, and let me just play it. 
with, so you've probably heard it if you've heard of Andre Crouch's version. <laughs>
example for us is what Jesus did as the Son of God and an example for us in this life that we live today. So, Janet, want to read for us? Thank you so much, by the way, for reading. Appreciate those who are willing to read the Word of God because it, it does speak to our hearts and we need someone to give us the good news. So thank you, Janet. Christ encourages you and his love comforts you. God's spirit unites you and you are concerned for others. Now make you completely happy. Live in harmony by showing love for each other. Be united in what you think as if you were only one person. Don't be jealous or proud, but be humble and consider others more important than yourselves. Care about them as much as you care about yourselves and think the same way that Christ Jesus thought. Christ was truly God, but he did not try to remain equal with God. Instead, he gave up everything and became a slave when he became one of us. Christ was humble. He obeyed God and even died on the cross. Then God gave Christ the highest place and honored his name above all others. So in the name of Jesus, everyone will bow down, those in heaven on earth and under the earth. And to the glory of God the Father, everyone will openly agree. Jesus Christ. Thank you so much, Janet. And um, what I like about Culver, although I've taken a little risk in opening up the door, I like that uh, it's less formal than some churches I've been in. And, um, just about anything could happen. And uh, I remember one time, one of my first Sundays here, we didn't have very many people here, but a bunch of kids kind of stumbled in. And we just set them up and they played along with Gail, I think. And, uh, so we can make things happen. If we, I think we know it's going before Gail came. Uh, we can make things happen in the Lord by being open to what He has for us, even if it's a surprise. Uh, by the way, there's coffee back there today. Uh, for those of you who are busy, there, after the service, there's coffee and cookies. So if you don't like the service, at least there, you can do that. Be thinking about that during the, during, during the service and during the sermon. All right, so this is the time we have our joys and concerns. Um, whatever's on your mind. Uh, I visited, I actually got to visit yesterday for the first time since this COVID hit. And I uh, visited a couple of people. We kept our distance and it was outside. But in Tesco, we've got uh, Joanne and Charlie Matthews. Are both are joined at a a stroke and she's recovering and Charlie had a broken hip and he's recovering and their daughter Amy and granddaughter Kelsey, Kelsey thank you uh, are helping take care so that situation needs some care and needs some prayer uh, Charlie is looking to come home this week and they really need to, to shore up the care uh, because there will be two people at home that really need uh, help but anyway, Joanne was telling her, telling her me that she's doing her exercises, which is hard for people to do in rehab. And uh, then I visited Virginia Levin. And, uh, anyway, she, I don't her name, but anyway, let's pray for those two people that need healing. And, uh, and I'm grateful that I got to, to visit. I mean, it's something I like to do. I've been kind of uh, restricted with all of the COVID problems. So let's let's give thanks, but also let's pray for Joanne, Charlie, and Virginia. Lord, in your mercy. Do we have other requests for Francis? Dr. Ken Wheel and daughter. He's Ken Weevil and Darda. And Ken is a retired doctor of Minneapolis. Uh, let's pray for them. Lord, in your mercy, you are great. I have the joy of the West Bank Jail and Janice for having to treat the pitch with her. And for our place, we can't get our house for a while. They have brought out more questions when you need it. You don't have friends like that much. 
So someone coming to your rescue, Dale and Janet, yeah. at the fifth they wheel, fifth wheel, because they, they had to have some work done in their house and needed to be out. Right out, you know. I mean, you don't know how much you appreciate it. Yes, I've been out there long. Thank you so much for doing that. Thanks. Let's give thanks for that. Lord, in your mercy, you are our thanks. And I just have to say thanks to Jim. He did the same thing for us when we needed a fridge and didn't have one. And he just let us use the fridge. It is awesome. Let's give thanks for friends that help in time of need. Lord, in your mercy, you are our thanks. Yes, Hazel Hadmeter is more than just, what should I say, a regular person. She was the one that kind of held Ada together. Um, I had one of the kids that she had tutor that didn't really want to learn to read, and she had a way. She was real stern but real gentle, and he wanted to come over for cookies, and go, she goes, well, we'll spend a little time reading, you can have some cookies. And so she taught him to read, and he now manages a pizza hut. So, um, she, and she just held that town together. I don't know what's going to happen uh, with her and some of the others that uh, are, are losing. But let's pray for, celebrate what Hazel has done, but also let's pray for her family. Uh, this will be a loss, not just to her, but to the community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers and our praise. Yes, the roof is done, and I didn't want to say anything until I got your opinion on how it looked, but um, I thought it looked great. Well, I mean, I'm one that, yep, yeah, we got a roof, but some people will go and say, well, they didn't get this and they didn't get that. But um, we got the, I was really proud of our board. They voted to get a lifetime guarantee shingle on so that we won't have to, it has to be 130 mile an hour wind to blow them off. Something like that. If we if that we get that kind of wind, I don't think we're going to be worried about the roof. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so we want to keep doing it because we've had kind of little roof repairs for a while, and this way it should be a permanent deal. So thankful for that, and um, thankful that and they have actually absorbed the cost because of the deal with the shingles there on a certain shingle that Jen was talking about. So thankful that that got put together. It was quick. Monday they were added off. And when I came back on Thursday, they had already, already finished it. People ought to watch them. They shake up every shit. It's unbelievable how good they are. Sure. I so, sit there and watch them. So they did a fantastic job and, uh, and got it done. And now we can, we got other things we can fix because we were worried about the, about the roof. But uh, thankful for the roof. We need one. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. 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 It is terribly steep. It just scared us walking I've been up on those roofs before, and you think, oh, that doesn't look bad. You get up there, it's like. They had ropes that they were. Yeah, you need something. Sometimes people play with ropes. I saw that guy was up there, and that was scary. Yeah. So thankful that people even do that. Yeah. Take that risk, but mainly that they didn't do it. Lord, in your mercy, here are our aids. Yes. I have a request for uh, a now minimum. Does it go here? But she just lives real close. Yes. She supported the problem. Help us a lot. Um, from back from that tornado, back a while, she's had three different contractors come out and say they're going to fix her roof on her barn, put a big hole, and she's just concerned that the snow's going to come and a lot of hay is going to be running from. From that, right. this last guy will follow through and it'll work out. Well, I, they're having trouble with it and they you know, get supplies, so yeah. it's understandable. But so let's pray for Anel and her roof. And, you know, she's out there alone. She needs help from time to time with other things and that she will get the help that she needs. And also, the roof on her barn needs to be fixed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Anything else? It's good. We bring our cares before the Lord, and He says we don't 
You see, because they're not asked. All right, well, let's go ahead and we'll um, sing our prayer song. Then we'll have a moment of silence. I'll lead us in the pastoral prayer. And uh, after the offering, Chappie, would you like to play them? Would that work for you? Brother, where are you? I am so happy you're here. Oh, me too. And, um... Finally moved up. Yeah. We'll leave it to all the church. <laughs> yeah. Well, I am just happy that we have a church where we welcome people to come in and just play if they have a song, if anyone else has a song. Um, we're welcome to have them sing because the Lord speaks through music and uh, you have such a heart and a passion. So, after the offering... We'll have Donovan play for us. All right, so back to our prayer song. Our prayer hymn is 2071 in your faith and symbol. God, we thank you for today. We thank you for the cooler weather. We thank you for the weather that is, has allowed farmers to get some of their work done. We thank you for the healing that you've brought to people. We pray for anyone that's hurt here that needs healing. We pray that you would heal them. Hurts on the inside that the state of this world brings and also hurts on the outside. Hurts of injury or sickness or disease. Pray for healing for this congregation, but also for this whole community. We pray for those who are leading during this time, those that are leading in our church council and mayor, and county commissioners. We pray that you would bless them and guide them during this time especially. Bless them for their work. We pray for our state officials and governor and legislators and Supreme Court. We pray that you would bless them and guide them. Help them to look to you and for our national government, for our president and Congress and Supreme Court and all the advisors. I pray that you would bless them and help them to be able to do what is your will for this country. Thank you that you are a mighty God and that we must listen to you if we want to do that which is best for our nation. So guide us, we pray. Guide our leaders. Pray for those who are serving in the military that you would bless them and protect them as they protect us. Keep them healthy. We pray for those that are separated by distance from their families that you would keep them close at heart. And thank you for their service. We pray for the families that are left perhaps at home. I pray that you would bless them and protect them and keep them healthy. We pray for 
those that are serving in our hospitals. I pray that you would bless them and keep them safe and healthy. And we pray that uh, as we become more able to handle the ills of this COVID-19, I pray that more visitors would be allowed in to see those in long-term care and that you would take care of them and help them to be in contact with you so that they might experience your joy. We pray for those who take care of our local emergency situations, the EMTs, the firefighters, the police and sheriff departments. I pray that you would bless them and bless them for the work. For those who transport our goods and services so that we might enjoy the life that we do, we pray that you would bless them. I pray for our schools. I pray that you would bless those who are working in the schools, bless the students, help them to learn everything they need to learn. Thank you for all the teachers and administrators and aides and bus drivers that are willing to stay in during this tough time. You know that in some districts are having a hard time finding people to do these jobs. I pray that you keep them all safe. We pray for those who are our missionaries, that you would bless them and keep them safe and healthy and help them with their travel. We pray for the persecuted church, for those especially in North Korea and China that face persecution for their faith. We pray that you would strengthen them and give them that supernatural ability to, to fight against an enemy that wants to tear down their faith. Pray that they might be able to share their faith and stand strong and blanket them with their love. Pray for those who are incarcerated. We pray that you would bless them, speak to them through your word. I pray that they would be reconciled to you and to their families and to their communities. Now we would pray together the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Our will be done, honor earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of our earth. Amen. This time we'll receive your offering. We've got a blue basket in the back. You can give now or whenever as you feel it.
Amen. Amen. You see it. Now we're going to hear from Donovan, who has put out some albums and he's played in Nashville, and we get to hear him here. One line. Thank you so much for coming and playing for us. Morning. 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 It's always good to come here and play for y'all. And today uh, I think I'll play a song that was the second song I wrote back in uh, when I was in the Air Force Pararescue teams. I was married at the time, and uh, of course, do what happens a lot of times in Pararescue's high demand on families, and a lot of divorce happens. She had a, when I met her in uh, Guam, she had a little six month old child, and I married her. And she, the child turned into a year because she was, uh, we've been together for six months. The song called Who's Gonna Mold the Clay? She was six months old when I came in her life. I will tell you. 
was it God again, or merely something he made? They thought of it for ten said to each other. We can't say that God made John this right. Jesus will ask us, why you didn't leave John? On the other hand, these people think that John was a prophet, and we are afraid of what they might do to us. That's why we can't say that it was merely some human who gave John the right to baptize. So they told Jesus, we don't know. Jesus said, then I will tell you who gave me the right to do what I do. Jesus said, I will tell you a story about a man who had two sons. Then you can tell me what you think. The father went to the older son and said, go work in the vineyard today. His son told him that he would not do it. But later he changed his mind and went. The man then told his younger son to go work in the vineyard. And the boy said he would, but he didn't go. Which one of the sons obeyed his father? The older one, the chief priest, the one who was answered. Then Jesus told them, You can be sure that tax collectors and prostitutes will get into the kingdom of heaven before, before God. You can be sure that tax collectors and prostitutes will get into the kingdom of God before you ever go. When John the Baptist showed you how to do right, you would not believe them. But these evil people did believe them. And even when you saw what they did, you still would not change your minds and believe. This is the little Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.
So he's making excuses. He said, well, you know, I got this battle fight, so, and I got the people here, and they're getting impatient, so let's just go and take the battle on. And God got really bothered with him and upset with him because he was the king that was supposed to be in touch with God, and he didn't listen. He didn't go with God's timing, and he didn't obey God in that way, and he lost his kingdom. Because of that, that was the final straw. He didn't lose his kingdom. And then we read in Philippians about Jesus, who was the obedient son, even to death on the cross. But also he, he humbled himself. Can you imagine um, if you've ever been in a group, well, most of the time we don't have this happen as adults, but as a kid, if you've ever been in the middle of a circle and people are humiliating you, that's what Jesus put up with, with the Pharisees that thought they were so right. They missed. Here was God walking among them. God walking among them. And they missed it. They were so concerned about their little laws that they couldn't see God was with them. That God had come down, became a person, wanted to share their sorrows, and understood that they were mortals and wanted to, to help them out. And the Pharisees were all caught up with their laws and rules. But they missed the whole point. John the Baptist came to prepare the way. If you noticed, or if you listened in, in the story of Moses, God told Moses, go, and I will be in front of you. I noticed that for the first time when I read through this. He said, go, and I will be in front of you. And so when you obey God, he, you go, and he's in front of you. He is there to make the path clear. And if you don't go in God's time, you go around God, or you go beside him, and you don't listen to what he's got to say. And then we get to the the example of the Pharisees who didn't listen to John the Baptist. I was trying to think of what tool did I bring up, and I try not to bring the same one. Um, and I have to get something I can bring in. For my online one I did, I used a cat because I like these cats because they're, they're the typical of the disobedient person because they'll obey if it's handy, if it's not, uh, then they won't. I had a cat that was I was doing my, my sermon on the, the patio, the cat just sat there and listened. Now, if I had told him to sit there and listen, he wouldn't have done it. And in fact, uh, so I used him as the illustration of what people are most of the time like. As long as it's convenient, as long as it fits with our schedule, you know, we'll go along with God's will. But if it's something that we ask, that he asks us to do that really doesn't fit, then we tend to get mad. In fact, I tried to pet him afterwards because I thought, well, thanks for being my... Uh, my example, and then he started patting my hands like, don't bother me, I'm here. And we're that way towards God, but I couldn't bring the cat along because for obvious reasons the cat wouldn't work. And if I let him out of the bag, who knows where he would end up in the culvert. And then uh, Elaine would have to feed him if he would come. But <laughs> <laughs> this tool, because it is so useful, and by the way, I don't have a on it, um, so don't worry. Uh, I'm afraid of what, what could happen. What is this? Sorry. I didn't scare you anything. But it's a serious tool, isn't it? I love this tool because I can make anything happen that I want with this tool. I can have uh, two befores, just like it's like a magic wand. You go through two befores, you go through nails, you go through bolts, you go through metal, you can cut out something cheap metal, you can cut through a door, you can do anything with this tool. But it, it's it really cuts things to the quick. Um, I go through a lot of blades because I do do some things. But there's some new things I want to try with this. But this is like the repentance that God called the Pharisees to do. He said, you got to cut through. I'm not going to do this again because it's not going to jump. But you got to cut through that old stuff that you've been doing that's been wrong. And those who had been sinning, those sinners, saw that. They said, you know, you're right. I need to cut this out of my life. I need to, to change. I need to, to follow the kingdom of God. They heard the message of John the Baptist. Repent. Change what you're doing. Repent means you stop what you're doing, you're doing and you turn around when you know you're doing something wrong. The Pharisees were so caught up with their layers. Their layers of laws and orders and, and uh, way and habits and ways of doing things that they couldn't see, they couldn't cut through all that 
to see the living God that was behind them. The law of the Lord is good. It guides us and restores our soul. But the way they were using it was like a barrier to keep people away. God wants us to cut through our sins and our self-righteousness and anything that we might have and get to Jesus. Get to the Holy Spirit. Allow Him to work in us because He wants to break through that gobbledygook and get in and bring us joy. He wants us to experience that little bit of heaven. I love the story of the two rebellious, or the two sons. The one, I mean, you used to see this in school, those of you who are teachers. You see the one that gave an assignment, oh yeah, I'm going to get right on that. And then the next day, they wouldn't have it in. And there was a kid that would whine and complain and say, why do we have to do this? But the next day, the assignment would be done. He said, who really did the kingdom of God? Who really is the obedient son? The Pharisees were saying, oh yeah, we're going to do God's will. We got it all down. We got all this down in books and we got all this down in our rituals. We're going to do it. But they missed the whole point. The sinners who complained and whined and maybe even made fun of the Pharisees when it came down to doing God's will, they did it. They repented. So let's be like that son or that child that listens to God's word, God's word, and even if it's a little tough to hear it, we think about it and we say, yeah, he's right, i got to do it. Rather than the son who says, oh yeah, I'll, I'll go along with anything. But in the end, doesn't do what God calls him to do. God has called you to a mission. He's called you to repentance. He's given you a tool to do it. Are you going to do it? Or are you just going to leave the tool in the bag and not let him do the work that needs to be done? Because once you get, once I use this to get all the rotten stuff out of the house that, I'm, that we're fixing up over there, then we can start putting in the new stuff. We can start putting the new tubifores, the new plumbing, the new um, electrical in, and Dale will help me out with that stuff because I don't know what I'm doing for the most part. But I get people to help me, but we couldn't do it unless we did the demolition with this first. And that's what repentance is, is getting rid of the old rotten stuff and bringing in the new and letting God build a beautiful house here in Culver that is his home, his dwelling place, the church that is here. And each one of you is a part of that. Amen. Let's do our part. The closing song. Carl? Yes. You told us to Found in your faith, we sing book. All final.